we are live. Fantastic. I'm going to open up my little chat box here so I can see any messages that are coming in. Um, oh, I'm very excited. Very excited. Hello, Morgan. How are you? Good. How about you? I'm good, thanks. Um, let's just go ahead and let's see. Um, let's just get started. We'll just get right to it. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, I, doing a little training today on taking amazing food pictures for Instagram. And with me, I have Morgan Beasley. She's a women's health coach. And I met Morgan last summer, um, I think just in a random like health, a Facebook group for health coaches and we connected. And I started following Morgan on Instagram. And I mean, just fell in love because her pictures are amazing and inspiring. And it made me want to like learn how to do it. Um, I still haven't figured it out. Hopefully I learned something today from Morgan. Um, but I wanna encourage you if you have questions, go ahead and type them in the chat box. Uh, Morgan is very excited to share with us how she takes such amazing pictures. Now, first I want to share um, some of Morgan's pictures in case you haven't seen it. Here is our, oops, here we go. This is, oh, I have so many windows open, bless me. All right. Um, this is Morgan and two of her amazing pictures here. And this is just a, a sampling. She's got so many, if you go ahead and um, check out her feed, she's got so many amazing pictures. And um, you know, she often posts recipes. She puts amazing captions that are really engaging um, with the pictures. And you can see she's got salad. She's got um, a smoothie. And I think, is it cannolis? Right. Uh, right. Grapes. Oh, my God. You're mm -hmm. all awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that's a smoothie again. Um, a, probably a smoothie bowl because Morgan loves to do smoothie bowls. And she does pancakes and waffles. And I think I have another duplicate in there. That's okay. And soup. And she is just awesome. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Morgan. And Morgan's going to walk us through the steps that she takes to produce these amazing pictures. Okay. So the first thing I want to let everybody know is it is practice. And it takes a lot of practice. Not every picture that you're going to take is going to turn out like perfect and everything, but it's just about making it your own and continually doing it. Your style is going to evolve. You know, it's just going to take time and to not give up on it because there have been times where you want to give up, but you just keep going because it's actually supposed to be, it's, it's really fun. And once you capture the picture that you really want and you really love it, you're going to feel so proud of yourself. Like after you edit it, you're just going to be jumping for joy when you get that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is good lighting. And you need to make sure that you have, uh, like, natural lighting is the best kind of lighting. I know when you get really professional, you could do, like, artificial lighting. But I try to stick to just natural lighting. My biggest tip is to go around your house and find the room that you think has the best natural lighting. And that could be windows, you know. Use the windows that you have. The windows that are the biggest in my house are in my living room, living room in my kitchen, hence why I'm in this room. Um, so that's where I like to take pictures is my kitchen, like right beside my kitchen table and right on my kitchen table is because that's where I get the best lighting. So use what you have and just try to find the best natural lighting. And I kind of want to go over what angles you want to use. So there are like four different angles Two that I mainly use and the other two that I don't recommend using because I've tried that before and it did not work and it doesn't turn out really well. So the best lighting are an overhead shot. And I'm going to say flat lay a lot, but usually that just means like where you would have all your food laying out. So an overhead flat lay shot would be wherever you have your food laid out with all your ingredients, you know, make it look pretty little, you know, utensils, whatever you want to use. And you could take it overhead. And that's one of my favorite ways if you have something like a salad or oatmeal. Um, usually if you're doing like a stack of pancakes, maybe you want to show like the drizzle of it and the thickness of it. 
then you can use a side shot. And whenever I do side shots, I always make sure that the sun is coming in from the side rather than from taking it in front of it. Those are the two that I don't recommend. It's taking a picture with the sun shining in front of your food or behind your food. And what I mean by that is if you have, say, the stack of pancakes and you're trying to take a picture of it, you don't want to take it to where the sun's shining like right here in your window and you're in front of it and taking a picture of your pancakes. By doing that, you're letting in too much lighting on your pancakes and it's going to be too bright and too overdone. It's going to drown out all your colors. So again, whenever you're doing pancakes or something like that, I always try to do like a side angle or semi side, you know, to where the natural lighting is hitting but you're not all the way turned because again, if you turn this way and the sun's coming this way, it's going to produce too much light on that picture. And it's kind of the same, the opposite of way around whenever you're taking a picture of, again, the stack of pancakes, you don't want to take it to where the sun is shining behind the food. By doing this, you're going to create sharp, sharp and like harsh shadows all over the food to where it's going to look dark. And what I like to compare this to is if you're taking a portrait of somebody if you've ever taken a picture of somebody and they're behind, like the sun is shining behind them and you're in front of them trying to take the picture, if you ever try to take that picture, you kind of notice you can't make out the features. You can't make out their face and all that details that you want to capture because, again, the light is coming behind them and it's going to make their face look dark. So it's the same with food. You want to take it from a side angle or overhead. So if you get anything from that tip, it's try to take it overhead or from the side to where the sun is shining on the side of your food. That's the best way to get like the natural lighting. Whatever you do, just avoid taking it the other two ways. Um, so my second tip is what times take your photos. And I found that the best time to take your photos are either in the morning time or in the evening time. And this is because the sun is coming up, you have all these natural pretty colors, or the sun is coming going down and you have all the orange, the pinks in the air. Um, so I think the best times, and again, this depends on the time change. Like for right now, I've noticed that the best times now to take pictures where I live are like 9 o'clock to 9.30. And that's because the sun has just risen. You still have the prettiness. You still have, it's not too much. If you wait until later in the day, like whenever the sun's the brightest, you're going to get too much sun and too much lighting to where it's going to drown out your picture. So in the morning time, it's kind of like dewy outside. You still have the clouds kind of covering the sun. So again, you have that natural color and it's not too bright, but it still looks natural. So um, my third tip is to use what you have in your house. Now this can mean, this literally was my first backdrop and I still use this sometimes. Like this little cloth thing that I have that I found at a thrift store. I recognize that. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I love. Yeah. I love like woodsy, like, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you would call it. Like, I don't even know woodsy would be the word to describe this, but you know what I mean? I like rustic. I would call it yeah. rustic, kind yeah, of country, like country, country chic, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is called jute. I guess that's how you say it. G U T E, jute. Mm -hmm. um, but I use this as a background and I just found this in my house randomly and I was like, I'll just use that. You can also use um, linen napkins that you have around your house. You know, sometimes like this you can use, oh, this one's stained. But um, like this, this is stuff I like to use. You can lay this flat for some white and this will really bring out your food colors. There's different things you can find around your house that you can use and you wouldn't think about it but um, it makes it really pretty. You can use silverware that you have. Maybe you have some pretty gold silverware or pretty silver, silver, uh, I can't talk, silver, silverware that you can use. You know, there's different things that you can find around your house and use and add it to your picture. And that's another stuff I'm gonna talk about later on. But for right now, I just wanna let you know, like just to use what you have in your house. You have pretty um, plates, use it. If you have pretty bowls, you know, use that pretty, Dishes, you know, muffin tin, use that kind of stuff. Um, you can even add, like, greenery to your pictures. Maybe if you have, like, some um, dried flowers or something that you want to use, you can always add that. You know, there's just so many different options that you can try. And my best advice for getting inspiration is to go on Pinterest. 
or um, Instagram or somewhere like that where they do upload recipes. And every day I try to look at different recipes to get inspiration. Can it, cause it kind of like inspires you and motivates you to take better pictures. So like every time you get a chance and you remember like go on Pinterest, look at different stuff, look at different food photography, and you'll just get inspired by all the different colors that they use, all the different ways they lay it out. And you could try to replicate it. You could try to make it your own. You know, there's so many different options. So my fourth tip. Oh, yeah. You, oh, I was just going to say, I really like, um, I've noticed in your feed, you, you tend to go with a lot of neutral backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it really helps the food pop. Like if yeah. you're doing a colorful salad, you're doing avocado toast, you're doing your mm -hmm. smoothie bowl. Anything that's fruity, um, I think this is a salad with um, pomegranate seeds. Like it just pops because of that neutral background. Mm -hmm. And I just love that because it's a great backdrop, but it doesn't take away from the, the food that's in the picture. Yeah, and that's what I like to do because I always remind myself, like, what am I trying to capture? You don't want to overdo it, especially if it's a very colorful plate, mm -hmm. because if you do a colorful plate with tons of fruit and all that kind of stuff and you do a colorful background, well, that's just going to be too too contrast. You know, that's not going to blend really well. Mm -hmm. So you want to do kind of neutral black splash or even if it's white, you know, so use that kind of stuff. And don't overdo it with the colors because, again, you want the focus to be the food and not necessarily the entire layout. You want it to be mainly the food. So that's when sometimes I will even use a very simple layout where I'll literally just use these two. Just, you know, this, this. This is like my favorite way to use a picture. But, like, um, I'll use something like that because then it's not going to take away from my picture. And whenever somebody – sees my picture they're mainly drawn to the food and not like everything else happening around um, and so my fourth tip is to invest in some pretty bowls pretty spoons you know this doesn't mean you have to go all out and spend all this money because I did that and I regret spending half the amount that I spent because your style is going to evolve like what you like now may not be what you're going to like later on and you may never even use it. So kind of slowly add more things. For example, I got this. And whenever you're picking out things, make sure you're very um, smart about what you're picking out. Because as you can see in this one, I don't know if you could tell, but this is a very glossy bowl. It like it's very shiny and it's very it reflects a lot of stuff. And the other day, this kind of reminded me why I don't want these kind of bowls. Because you could take a picture with it. And the sun will shine on the opposite side of the bowl and you have all these different light shining and stuff. So you don't want that. So try your best to go. You can even see how bright this is, like because the sun is just like gleaming off of it. Um, so I recommend doing like a matte one. And as you can see, like this one does not really shine any light. It's matte. So it's not going to have all these different reflections coming off of it. So, um, yeah, just try to go with those kind of things. Um, and just find what you like. Like I like gold, so I use gold spoons. Wooden bowls, wooden spoons are my favorite too. Mm -hmm. um, just things that are simple. You don't want to. You don't want to do really plates that have a lot of designs on them either, because again, like Lori was saying, like that would be too distracting and take too much from your food. So try to just keep it simple, plain, and if you can, semi matte to matte finish with, when it comes to dishes. Um, and number five is to not overdo it. I know sometimes we think like more is better, but when it comes to food, focus on what you want to capture. If you want to capture a bowl of oatmeal with fruit, that's going to be your main goal is and main objective is to capture that and not everything else around it. So this doesn't mean you can't add different things to it, which is going to be my next tip is to what you need to add to it. But just make sure you remind yourself, What's my goal of taking this picture? What do I want people to see whenever they see this picture? Um, so my favorite tip is to add ingredients, cooking utensils, silverware. You know, I always ask myself whenever I'm laying something flat, you know, creating my flat lay, I always ask myself, what did I use to capture and what did I use to make this dish? So say you're making oatmeal. Well, um, if you still have some oatmeal left in a pot or you can even add some of that oatmeal back in the pot, 
use that pot with oatmeal in it that you use to cook in, or you can use a prettier one that's clean. Um, put that on the corner. You know, you can add some silverware, some cooking utensils that you used. Maybe you added some blueberries to your dish or chia seeds or peanut butter or something like that. Add that to your dish so it looks homier. So add different things that you use to make it, and it makes it look kind of, kind of comfy, and people can, like, see, like, the process that you went through to make that dish. So, for example, I'll use oatmeal again. If I made oatmeal with, like, strawberries or um, chia seeds or hemp seeds or something along those lines, I can lay that flat. I'll show you. I'll give you an example, actually. I'll lay that flat on my um, background. And then on that, I'll add my bowl along with, I'll probably lay like this on top, a linen napkin, lay my bowl on there, and then add like some chia seeds, like you could sprinkle those somewhere, just to make it look like this is what's in the bowl, you know. You can add the plate um, or the saucepan that you use to make the oatmeal. You can add that in the corner. You can add a spoon in the dish, or you can add a spoon, you know, sitting outside the dish. You know, just play around. Can I share share my screen here? Because I um I have you can tell me if this is this is kind of what you mean. Like you have the pot in the background. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so like, you, have, I, you have you have your wooden spoon. Here's your mm -hmm. jute nap. Here's your napkin. Um. Yeah, oh my <laughs> I love I love these measuring spoons. These are so cute. Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do, too. Um, like, you can get different measuring spoons, different cooking utensils. Maybe you used a grater to make um, zucchini, you know, to grate your zucchini or make zucchini noodles. Put the grater in there, like in the corner. You don't have to put the whole thing in there. Please don't put the whole thing in there. That makes too much. <laughs> like, you know, you put that in a little corner, maybe even in the corner to where you can see a part of it. Just, yep. It doesn't have to be in the full picture, but just adding a little piece in the corner or to the side or maybe used um, tahini. Um, another thing I like to do is put it in a wooden bowl, put my tahini in there, put a spoon in there so it looks like I just drizzled it on my pancakes or whatever you made. So it's kind of like just make it fun. And another thing I like to do whenever I'm taking my pictures, I'll take it. And sometimes it doesn't look right and I don't like the way it looks. I'll set my phone down or my camera, wherever I'm taking it at, and I'll go reach for another ingredient, throw that in there, see if it works, see if the layout works. If it doesn't, work with something else. The thing, though, whenever you're doing that kind of stuff, have in the back of your mind what you want to do, especially if it's something cold that will melt really quickly. Mm -hmm. Something that's kind of harder to capture are smoothie bowls and smoothies because they melt really quickly, and the toppings kind of go all, like, melted into it. So um, whenever you have that, have an idea in your mind and a flat lay already laid out. So then all you have to do is set it down and capture your picture. Work fast um, if you can because it melts really quickly. So if you're going to do something like cold or hot that's going to melt, work as quickly as possible and have in the back of your mind what you want to do and the, what you want to capture. It doesn't have to be exact, but just an idea so then you know you can work fast and add different things to it. Um, and then my last tip is to personalize it and make it your own. Not everything is going to look, you know, like so-and-so's. It's about making it look like how you want it to look. Yep. So yeah. my pictures and my editing is not going to look the same as somebody else's or yours because, you know, we're two different people. I'll have a different style than somebody else. It's all about finding what works for you, what editing style. You know, um, I like whites, kind of like what Lori said. I like the neutral you know I like I told, you, I told you your your pictures are famous like when I'll be scrolling through my feed my husband might be looking over my shoulder and he'll know it's your picture oh Before really he can see the words he knows he'll be like oh what did Morgan make today like they're famous they're identifiable they have your your personality they've got your signature look so yeah, yeah you've definitely done a good job of evolving and well, developing that yeah and I just want to share um back to your point about um it being a process and something that you learn. Mm -hmm. I just want to share this and I hope this is okay, but um, this is Morgan's, these are some of Morgan's pictures when she first started and you can see oh, a big difference. <laughs> well, right, but I'm just saying it's been an evolution. Yeah. It's a big difference between these pictures and 
how you know i'm going to scroll fast sorry really? i don't even remember those pictures oh yeah, my god they're from they're from the very very <laughs> beginning but you can see the difference now she's got she's developed her style she's got her neutral backdrops she's got um props and you know a signature look you know with the drizzles and the ingredients and i mean you've really come a long way with developing your style with your pictures yeah and like i was telling you the other day it's like just i may look at my pictures now and be like i'm so glad i've learned you know from my mistakes because you're all constantly learning new mm -hmm. stuff you're constantly learning new ways you want to add new techniques new angles and it's again about working with what you have mm -hmm. and just um just like practice that's all you could do you could only practice and not be too hard on yourself whenever it doesn't look picture perfect because sometimes like i was telling you it it pays off to look perfectly imperfect, mm -hmm. kind of like what you said, like a messy type perfect, to where the picture looks like like you really want to eat it. Sometimes when it's too perfect, it doesn't come off as authentic and it looks too fake and it doesn't look, you can't really notice the textures in it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I try to make sure that it looks a little, like if I do a drizzle, I add it around the plate. Like sometimes I just flop the spoon places. But it still looks like I purposely put it there because I want it to look messy, but not too messy to where it just looks um, sloppy, not sloppy. sloppy. Yeah. yeah, I want it to look kind of like professional, but yet yummy, like something somebody wants to eat. <laughs> right. Um, Fantastic. So, so I was going to talk about like the food editing kind of um, apps that I use. I have three different apps. One is the Lightroom CC, and for that one, I use presets. Um, I just started using those recently, about a few months ago. And so those, you have to pay for presets. Um, I already have some that are geared towards the pictures in my editing style, but the ones that are free that I wanted to show y'all are Visco, V-S-C-O, and Snapseed. Those are my two top two favorite um, food editing apps. I was going to show you all a video if my mouse is not asleep. I was going to show you all a video of how I actually edit that. Can you see the Can you see the video? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um so starting out here, as you can see, this is Visco, and then this is Snapseed. This is Lightroom, the other one I was talking about. This one is for presets, and again, you would have to buy the presets. But for my, the free ones, I use Visco and Snapseed. And the first one I go into after I take the picture is Visco. So as you can see, I'm going to click on that one. And you just click this little plus sign once you get in there, and you add your photo. And this is a photo I already had added in there that I'm going to edit. Okay, and so like once I click on the photo, you can see that there are different editing um, presets that you could do. This is A4, A5, A6. I always go with A6. So if you see right here, that's what I'm going to click on is A6. And it kind of gives you a scale. It starts at 12. I think it was 12 right here. And you could slide it down at what, how edited you want this picture, like the um, editing style for this one. I kind of just went around, I think I kept going a little bit lower and then I went, you know, just kind of edit, play around with it, kind of slide it up and down to see which kind you want. And then you, again, you just save that to your camera roll. I always do actual size and it saves it. And then you X out of that and then I open it up in Snapseed. So as you can see, you just put open from your device and you click your pictures. As you see, you can see I have tons of food pictures. <laughs> um, and then I get in there and I push the editing one and it gives you different ones. You can in this one, you can change like the brightness, the contrast um, in different ones. So I went th for brightness first. I kind of like a brighter color. So I kind of just moved it up and then you can go into contrast. Um, for this picture, I didn't do any contrast because of the papaya. It was already really orange. So contrast kind of makes it a little, adds a little more color, makes it a little darker. So I didn't want that one. I went in ambience because that makes your food look brighter. And I really like that one. 
But again, don't overdo it because it'll look too overdone. So I just slowly went up there and then I did a little highlight. And by highlighting it, it kind of brings out all the um, colors in the picture a little bit more. And then you also have shadow. And shadow is used whenever you have a lot of shadows in your food. It kind of um, hides those off. But I don't necessarily use those a lot because, again, this was shot overhead. So I didn't have any necessarily um, harsh shadows. And then I just clicked to show you the difference in between the editing. And then you just save it and you modify it and it's done. You just upload it to Instagram or wherever you're going to upload it. So, yeah, that's the, the process of the editing that I do. Awesome. I also was going to ask you a little bit about captions. Mm -hmm. um, how do you come up with captions? Is it easy for you to come up with captions? I'll say that's probably my hardest thing is thinking of, like, what to say. Yeah. Um, do you, I saw some you give the recipe and some you kind of direct them to your website mm -hmm. for the recipe. How do you decide which ones to share and which ones to... <laughs> Well, the way I decide that one are my favorite ones. I kind of put on my website because I want my website to look really good. So I'm like some of the ones that I'm I never I'm a perfectionist. So when it comes to pictures, I try to never upload ones that I'm not I'm kind of iffy about. And if I'm like, I don't really know if I like this picture, I usually don't upload it. Honestly, that's mm -hmm. just me. If I really like the picture, I'm going to upload it to my website and to Instagram. And the reason I don't upload the recipe on Instagram or Facebook is because I want to veer towards, you know, my website. I want to bring people towards my website so they can go on that. Okay. Um, and when I come up with captions. I kind of it takes me a while sometimes to come up with some. And then sometimes it kind of just pops in my mind. I try to just let your personality show when it comes to captions, you know, be yourself, talk about people actually like to listen to your story. They like to hear stories. I did a lot of research on this about how to do captions. They like to okay. hear stories. They like to know about you, what's going on in your life. You know, what did you do today? What was going on whenever you were taking this picture? You know, um, like for example, with the oatmeal thing, you could describe like what else you had with, if you had a matcha latte, you know, or what you're going to do that day. Like, this is my pre-workout, you know, about to go to the gym, about to spend the day doing some work or going to a yoga class this evening. Just let people into what you're doing that day. Mm -hmm. And even some things you're struggling with, you know, if you're struggling with something, I mean, not like intense struggle, but like something like anxiety or, you know, just so people can relate to you that you're also human and that you're also okay. struggling with something. People yes. like that. They like a story. I have found the posts where I'm most kind of vulnerable about like mm -hmm. things that are going on with me get the most engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really a, an adventure for me because I'm not really used to sharing a lot of stuff like that. So yeah, kind of two like, people want to be your friend. Yeah. yeah. They see you as like a friend. They want to like know about your life, you know, kind of like a YouTuber. You want to know like about their life. You know, whenever I think of people, whenever they upload stuff, I always think like, I wonder what they're doing. You know, it's not as engaging whenever you just see a picture with the recipe. Right. Um, and then that's another thing, too, is just try to um, switch up the length of your caption. Sometimes do short ones. Sometimes do longer ones. Mm -hmm. um, just play around with it and see which one gets better engagement on your page. Sometimes I do shorter ones, and then sometimes I do longer ones because it just depends, you know. Depends on the picture. Depends upon how I'm feeling that day. Honestly, if I feel like writing a long caption, sometimes it takes me a, over a day to write a caption, and I'll just sit there and kind of like a blog post. I'll write some of it, and then sometimes it's just not coming naturally. So I'll go do something, and then it'll pop in your mind like, "This is a a smart thing to say." <laughs> you know? it's a, it's something I'll like. I'll like hurry and go get my phone because I'm like, I gotta write this one down. <laughs> I feel like I, I, a lot of those things come to me when I'm either washing dishes or in mm -hmm. the shower. For some reason, those are two places that I, like, get a lot of inspiration. Yeah. So. Or, like, cooking or, like, laying in bed. You're like, this is clever. <laughs> you know? I like, yeah, like, that was really clever. <laughs> now, do you come up with your own recipes, or are they just kind of a lot of things that you – either derive from other recipes or what's the process that you use? Because honestly, I'm lazy in the kitchen and I'm lazy about what I eat. So for me, it's like anything more than like three ingredients, I can't be bothered. 
Um, so I'm always inspired by like your dishes that have like fun stuff in them. And um, sometimes I just like I actually since I just now turned vegan and I'm like plant based now. I like to do versions of ones that aren't as healthy. And even if you aren't vegan or anything like that, you can go online on Pinterest mm -hmm. and um, just take healthier versions because you can always figure out like what's a healthier version than white sugar. Well, coconut sugar, you know, maple syrup, just add different things. Sometimes it's a hit and a miss whenever I'm messing with stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like you'll make something like this is not nobody. I'm not going to share this recipe. You know, you got to still work on it. Yeah. So sometimes it's just like a hit and miss and you just practice kind of like with the picture taking. You just throw some stuff in there and see what you got. And if it doesn't turn out well, well, then, oh, well, try again next time, you know. Right. Right. Um, so what, was that it for your tips? Was that, was that mm -hmm. one? OK. Um, if we have any questions, you can go ahead and type them in the chat and more than can answer them. Um, I had another question for you. What was it? I don't know, but I'm going to look at your pictures differently now, now that I know, like, the, what goes on in, behind the scenes now. It's going to be a little bit more like, oh, there's the jute mat. Oh, there's yeah. her favorite white um, napkin. There's her gold. I'm going to start investing in some new ones because I'm like, I feel like I'm using the same ones. I'm like, I got to step it up or something. <laughs> I mean, it's part of your signature look. And I, I mean, I think that it's good to have that continuity. I really love that gold spoon, though, that's in that. I think it's a smoothie bowl picture here. Yeah. Home really good. Like Six that. bucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, um, and you know what I was going to say, too, is um, do you get stuff at, when you look for, where do you look for, I can't remember if you mentioned this, forgive me. Where do you look for, like, kind of interesting pieces to put like little um, your props to get to put in your pictures. Um, I mainly go on like um, home goods to have some mm -hmm. good options. Um, thrift stores have some good ones. Like if you're looking for stuff that's like boho, I guess you would say like rat and type stuff. Um, so most of mine are from like Marshall's home goods. I actually went into a store in my hometown and I found two wooden bowls. I'm all for wooden stuff. Like, I love wooden spoons, wooden mm -hmm. bowls, wooden plates. Um, that's kind of in right now when it comes to, like, smoothies, too. So um, I found those at a local store, a home goods type store. You can find them a lot of time, like, at stores that have homey stuff. Target yeah. may have some um, cool finds. Even Walmart or Dollar Tree, you may not think they have some cool stuff. But you can always, like, mess around, see what you have. See what kind of silverware they have. You know, there's always some sort of places that you can go that have like cool options. Mm -hmm. Just keep your eyes open. I, I, yeah, I love. Um, I I don't know if this is a southern thing, but the antique stores. Mm -hmm. Those, I mean, those are just like they give me a little bit of anxiety because there's just so much like stuff in a small mm -hmm. place. But we always find like the most interesting pieces. And my husband is he's a he cooks. He's um. He's amazing, but he collects like antique mixing bowls. Mm -hmm. So anytime we go into one of these stores, he goes straight for the kitchen stuff. So because we have to look to see if, you know, they have one of these bowls that, you know, so our, we have like a whole collection of these, these bowls, but, and I was just always like the most interesting stuff that, but I never cared because I never was taking pictures <laughs> of food and things like that. But now I'm going to be on the lookout for interesting pieces that I can mm -hmm. use. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally inspired now, Morgan. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to, to step up my Instagram feed. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to share or add? Um, I don't think so. I pretty much went over all of the tips I had. Okay. Um, then what, we're gonna wrap up, and I want to thank you so much for sharing this information with us and sharing all your tips. And that's let's see. And if you want to follow Morgan. On Instagram, she is at, uh, her handle is Keep It Purely. That's the name of her coaching business. And um, I'll go ahead and add that into the show notes as well. But thank you so much. I really appreciate the time that you took to come here and share this with us. And it's been very inspiring and very motivating. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.